Ms. Chair, take it away. Thank um, you. Um, unfortunately, this is my first time as chair and I have not yet memorized the introduction. So if we could please put that up on the screen and I will, I will begin the process of memorizing it today. Okay, you are all seeing slides in presentation mode at this point? Yes, I am now. Yes. This meeting is compliant with the governor's executive order N-08-21 issued on June 11th, 2011, allowing for the deviation of teleconference rules required by the Brown Act. The purpose of this is to provide the safest environments for staff and committee members and the public while allowing for public participation. The public may address the committee using exclusively remote public comment options. The committee may take action on any item listed on the agenda. Public meeting videos. Members of the public meeting uh, may, may be viewed, members of the public may view the open space and ecology meeting by logging into the Zoom meeting listed below. Open space and ecology committee meetings can also be viewed live and or on demand via the city's YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Brisbane CA or on Comcast 27. Archive videos can be replayed on the city's website by going to http colon slash slash brisbaneca.org slash meetings. To address the committee, the Open Space and Ecology Committee meeting will be an exclusively uh, virtual meeting. The OSEC agenda materials may be viewed online at www.brisbaneca.org at least 24 hours prior to the, a special meeting and 72 hours prior to a regular meeting. Meeting participants are encouraged to submit public comments in writing in advance of the meeting. Aside from commenting while in Zoom meetings, the following email and text line will be also monitored during the meeting and public comments received will be read into the record during oral communications or during an item. Email aetherton at brisbaneca.org or text 415-203-8897. Um, I, can, I, can, I can skip join the meeting part because if they're here, they've got that far. And do I need to read out the special assistance? I don't think so. I am honestly not certain. Um, I think we're probably okay. I think that's enough for now. Um, I therefore like to call this meeting of um, August 27th, are we? 25th. 25th. Oh, yes, there we are. I had to bring my little pop up down. The meeting of August 25th for OSEC is now called to order. Uh, I would like to do a roll call next. We have um, Shanna Calms. Donna Kelmy is here. Kelmy, I apologize. Mary Rogers. Here. Jason Noonan. Present. Uh, Ross Dykes. Present. And Glenn is absent. And Michelle Salmon is not on my list here, but I know I saw her. I'm here. I'm Zooming. Yeah, yeah you're not on my list for some reason. Probably because you are. have me memorized. Yeah, because of your brilliant, brilliant smile. Okay, did I get everybody? I should write this out for myself. I think you've covered the committee members. Okay, good. Um, let's move on to the adoption of the agenda. I need a uh, motion. I make a motion to adopt the agenda of August 25th. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, don't you have to go down the roll and call I individually? Yes, you do. Okay, for this You're one, wrong. we do. Okay. I can't hit my mute button fast enough. Yep. All right. So, Jason Noonan? Uh, aye, aye. Ross Dykes? Aye. 
Mary Rogers? Aye. Michelle Salmon? Aye. Shana Colmes? Oh, I'm gonna get this butchering this wrong. Sorry. Aye. All right. And Glenn is still absent. Um, Shana, so, could, Shana, could you say again how to say your last name? Yeah. Cal me. It's Cal, me. Cal, Cal is in California, me with a high Z sound at the end. Got Cal it. Me. Thank you. Thank Cal you. Me. Although I always feel really calm when I see your name. I love it. <laughs> but but not, none of my family members are. <laughs> Has Mary been saying your last name? Because I feel like <laughs> that snuck up on me. me too. I'm, sure I but I'm sure I butchered it. So you're not alone. <laughs> I would have told you. <laughs> Thank you. Shauna Calmies. I'm going to get that. Um, okay, so approval of the minutes. Maybe. I didn't have any. I, I mean, I moved to approve the minutes. I second. We, did anybody have any corrections that they haven't already sent to Adrian? Did we skip over oral communications or were there? Oh, none? we did. Okay, you're right. Um, okay, if are there any members of the public who would like to speak during oral communications? I would. I would just like to remind everybody that we are at this point moving forward with the San Bruno Mountain Watch Pancake Breakfast on Sunday, September 12th. And uh, we'll be following all the county protocols uh, for safety. And we hope you show up. Right. Um, and do we need to get tickets for that? Yes. Tickets will. Tickets are available online. I have tickets. And then also uh, you can get tickets at the door. And you, we also have uh, you can get breakfast to go this year. Right. Should you, should you not feel like being around other people while you scarf your pancakes with uh, homemade <laughs> blackberry syrup. syrup. Mm -hmm. And I've promised to bring my uh, gluten-free pancakes and um, I've got crayons just in case. Okay, good. Perfect. I promise I will not eat your gluten-free pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> the regular <laughs> pancakes are pretty spectacular. They're good. <laughs> yeah. But I, some I people can't eat gluten, so I'm very appreciative, Barbara. I um, promise I won't eat your crayons. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adrian, uh, I'd like to make a note for the record that Glenn has joined us. Yes, I just mentioned. Thank Great. You. Welcome, Glenn. We haven't we haven't done so very much without you here. Um, I think now we're ready to. Any other uh, public comments and oral communications? All righty. Approval of the minutes. Uh, I make a, a motion to um, approve the minutes. Second. Second. Oh. Go third. Okay. <laughs> Let me go see oh, if I can. This is Jason. <laughs> okay. So Jason Noonan. Hello. Uh, I, 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 yes. I. Yes. Okay. Barbara Ebel. I. Mary Rogers. I. Shauna Calmes. I. Michelle Salmon. I. Um, not Randy Bro, not <laughs> Nyla. Glenn Filkin. <laughs> you're you're muted. You're muted, Glenn. I believe you're muted. Yes. Okay. Great. So I believe we have unanimous approval of the minutes. Um, did I? I don't think I got. Oh, asked. sorry, Ross. You're off. You're not showing up on my screen again. Okay. Hi. I'm going to make a paper list. This is not to be trusted. All right. Moving on to old business. What do we have for old business? We did not have any. I should have removed that. I apologize. We are on to new business. Cool. That makes it fast. Indeed. Um, so for uh, new business uh, today, we are having a presentation from Climate Corps fellow, Ni fellow Nyla Kusar on our building efficiency program. Um, this is 
uh, essentially Nyla was not last week with us. Her fellowship ends at the end of August. So um, glad to have her here presenting um, kind of a capstone, uh, if you will, of what she's learned and, and the results for the year. And Nyla, um, go ahead and take it away and just let me know when you want me to advance the slides. Awesome. Thank you, Adrian. I didn't realize I'll be going first. Um, uh, so, of course, yes, my name is Nyla. Um, I am the Brisbane Building Efficiency Fellow. Uh, I've been working with Adrian on the uh, Building Efficiency Program here in the city of Brisbane. Um, just a little bit of background in terms of the fellowship. So, um, and we actually, so City of Brisbane partnered with SEI in terms of the fellowship program. So I work with them doing like professional development um, programming. And then also um, the site location is at Brisbane. And so that's um, why I'm working on the program. So a little bit more background on that. Um, yeah, go to the next slide now. So a bit of an overview of, you know, the purpose and really the objective of the program. Um, so the purpose was really in to reduce the carbon footprint for existing buildings and the associated lower risk of climate impacts. And then um, uh, the main objective was to implement a building efficiency program to assess building performance. And so of course this included buildings that were over 10,000 square feet within the city of Brisbane. Um, this modeled after um, AB 802 and buildings that are over 50,000 square, square foot. And they uh, and that's for the, the state of California. So that's a, another thing, but um, uh, yeah, so and then in terms of who we partnered with, we received a grant um, from the public, uh, the California Public Utilities Commission um, to, oh, yeah, yeah, Adrian, step in, step in. <laughs> the grant was from the Air District. Oh, the Air District, okay. Sorry, I, didn't, I didn't notice that uh, um, logo issue, but apologies. No worries, no worries. Okay, so the Air District, oh my goodness, I can't believe I missed that. Um, and then uh, to actually, and then, of course, in the city of Brisbane. So there's something that I want to point out is um, Energy Star is actually separate from a separate entity um, from the city of Brisbane, of course. And so um, we've been um, utilizing that platform in order to execute um, the program. So, so they're kind of like a partner, not really a partner, but we're using their system, which really helps to advance the program. <laughs> I'd say partner in a way. They partner with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sort of like a silent partner. Yes, yes, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> cool. And then, oh, uh, so in the purpose and what we're doing, right, the phases. Um, so the first phase was the planning and development of the ordinance back in 2019. Um, like drafting the ordinance development process and as well as doing community workshops. Um, and then um, later in the year, uh, so in 2020, late 2020, yeah, um, the program infrastructure and piloting um, was then implemented um, in terms of the, uh, so I'm just essentially giving you the timeline here on, on how things rolled out in terms of the building efficiency program. Um, and phase two, which is where we're at now, is the mandatory benchmarking um, uh, phase. So last year, it was more so, you know, just piloting, kind of testing it out, seeing what worked, what didn't work. And then phase two is, is where we're at now is the actual implementation process. Um, and then beyond that would be beyond benchmarking and thinking of ways that we can improve, um, uh, improve to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Anything you want to add, Adrian? <laughs> Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, so again, this is addressing existing and um, newer newer buildings um, onward. And so here we have uh, our our largest uh, greenhouse gas emitter. Uh, one of the larger ones are our buildings here in the city of Brisbane. So regionally, it's it's a huge focus to. Um, invest our time and energy um, on, and resources on, you know, commercial and industrial buildings just because it consumes so much of our energy here, and it, or excuse me, not consumes energy, but it emits the, the most greenhouse gases um, in the city of Brisbane. Next slide. 
so stakeholder engagement. So I found that relationship management is really the key to um, the success of the program. Um, considering, you know, we as the city, we are more regulatory when it term when it comes to um, you know, building efficiency, you know, we can't, of course, force anyone to do anything. And so uh, a, a lot of what we're doing is really partnering with the building owners to um, ensure that they um, understand what the program is about and why we're doing it and, you know, how we can benefit them in the long term. And so I included the stakeholder enge engagement uh, type of diagram because I felt like it's useful to really understand um, kind of where we sit in here. And so um, I would say we are more in the, you know, kind of the, the monitoring uh, as, as the city. Um, and, you know, we want to keep everyone informed uh, in terms of like the public um, and then manage closely. That would be more so uh, like the, the building owner. And so keeping everyone satisfied would be um, the, the residents, right? So again, this is kind of like, you know, different touch points for us. And then the bullet points represent ways that we can engage with those uh, different stakeholders. Next slide. And then some uh, community engagement strategies that I felt were actually really helpful um, in, terms for, in terms of maintaining that engagement that we looked at in the last slide um, was using like, so um, a lot of what I did was phone calls, emails, um, and you know a few letters, but for the most part, it was phone calls and emails. And so utilizing that plain language um, and, and really speaking in a way that is uh, very conversational with building owners, um, of course, sharing information and being up, up front about everything that I do know. And then that just leads right into transparency in terms of what the goal of the program is and continuing that dialogue. Um, also ensuring that, you know, that I have a positive attitude around the program. I think the more I guess excited or positive I am about it, the more um, they are likely to be as well, as well as active listening into some of their concerns or some of their apprehensions in terms of what the program will bring in the future. And then again, just trusting and, and reestablishing to build that relationship with um, owners. So that is, next slide. Next slide. So outreach, so I talked a little bit about this already, but in more detail, um, I did about 235 calls, uh, like outreach calls. Um, that was a lot. So we have probably, I think it was around 105 buildings total. Um, we had exempt a few, so more or less. Um, but essentially, you know, I had to call everybody twice and more, right? And so um, there was a lot of phone calls being made, a lot of emails being sent out. And these are the initial outreach, right? So these are the phone calls that I initiated, emails that I had initiated. Uh, we conducted four webinars in terms of workshops, and then I did two screen shares. Everything was completed virtually. Whoa, right? <laughs> Okay, next slide. <laughs> uh, so the stats, right? So just to get right to the point, we had 47% compliance rate and um, an 87% engagement rate, which is pretty huge. I think that's, um, that's a lot of engagement that we stimulated over the course of those 235 calls and, you know, 100 and some emails, right? So um, that was effective. Um, and then as we look here, you know, we still have a few that have not submitted and we're, we're still processing grant extensions. And to be honest with you, I think something that we can consider in the future is that this is, it takes a while, you know, it's a, it doesn't take long to actually benchmark, but I think that we, as the city, you know, we have to be patient with some of the building owners. <laughs> and so, um, ensuring, understanding that, you know, um, you know, this is a process. And so, uh, that's, that's a little bit more about the graphic. Uh, Adrian, did you want me to go into any more detail in terms of, of this pie chart? It would help to talk a little bit about that, what the gap between the 47% and the 87%, what kind of stages those different folks are in, because that's a, a, a pretty good, big gap. Okay, so in terms, okay, oh, I see what you're saying. Without, so, you don't have to go, you know, specific percentages or anything like that, just, just what those categories are. 
Okay, so in terms of engagement, so essentially where I got that number from is from the not submitted. So if it hasn't submitted, likely we just haven't heard from them. And so everybody else on the pie, we have heard from in some shape or form. And so we have begun kind of the compliance process. And now these are, these aren't individuals, these are uh, properties. So I guess I should be more specific in that this engagement rate is per property. Um, so 87%, not per contact that we have. Um, and then in terms of 47% complied, that includes complied with issues as well. So as you can see on the chart, it says complied, and then it also says complied with issues. Um, so everyone else is kind of like in that processing phase. Um, so in terms of an extension granted or data quality issues or data not verified, that's kind of like that processing phase. Does that make more sense? Yeah, I think I would just say, you know, to, to kind of clarify on the complied with issues, these are folks that for year one, we consider them to have been successful. We're not expecting anything more from them, but mm -hmm. there are minor errors with their report that we are asking them to address in the future. And these are generally very minor things. The more significant issues are the ones that are marked as data quality issues. Those are the ones who have submitted a report but have not actually um, submitted a report that we deem to be complete or it has too many errors for us to be able to say that they are compliant for this year. In a lot of cases for those data quality errors, the errors are low energy use intensities. And we think a lot of those are really just issues due to COVID. Um, but we've had at least one case so far when we, when we started to follow up on that question uh, we did find that they had omitted a number of meters on the property. So, so there was an issue there with um, not having all of their data included. Um, and then exempt um, are ones who are, uh, a couple of them are permanently exempt. So next year they will be removed from our roster entirely. That's because we had incorrectly categorized their square footage or uh, their building type. Um, a couple of condos were included and they are exempt. Um, so, uh, and then a couple of others are ones that will, will be expected to comply next year, but had, a, had an exemption just for this one year. Um, and then on those extension granted, those are really like a couple of property owners that have multiple properties each that have not yet gotten in their whole batch. So we are expecting still to hear from uh, those folks, uh, you know, hopefully very soon. Um, and then I know I saw a, a couple of hands come up on this slide. So I think Barbara was first and then Glenn had her hand up, but then lowered it. So maybe we've already answered her question. So. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, um, how does this compare with the pie chart we saw last time? Pretty similar. There hasn't been a lot of movement in the last month, to be honest. Yeah, that's what, that's what I meant by, you know, this process is a lot slower <laughs> than we than we anticipated. Um, we, we figured if we just reach out, send an email, make a phone call, you know, things would be done overnight. Um, but I guess we, we're understanding that, you know, folks are still getting to know the system. Um, things are aren't as we anticipated. We have more hands. Okay, more questions. <laughs> Mary, do you want to jump in or Glenn, did you? Oh. I, you did have your hand up, but I don't know if you lowered it because your it was answered. I did. I so just to be very clear, the difference between the forty-seven percent and the eighty-seven percent is that the forty percent between those two numbers are not officially in compliance. But they're working on it. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That was my understanding. Thanks, Mary. Oh, um, this, <clears throat> my question goes back a couple of slides, but I'm sure you know, the webinars that you um, had, there was four webinars, how many did you get a lot of attendees or not, not as many as we had hoped, honestly, um, okay. I think we had, you know, maybe around a dozen. Um, it was, it yeah, was, that's, that's okay. That's pretty good. Um, you know, I, I think there was one, one of the last ones where it was, you know, just a handful. Um, so, you know, something in that range, definitely not as many as we had maybe hoped. 
Okay. And those All recordings right. of those webinars are available on our website now. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Barbara, was your hand from earlier or did you have No, I, I put it back up. Um, I'm wondering, do we have a strategy for um, those who have just not submitted their, I, I mean, I know we didn't expect to get 100% this year, um, that these programs don't usually hit 100% never, never hit 100% in their first year. But I'm wondering if, what do we have, you know, now that since Nyla is leaving us, what is our, what is our going, our forward strategy? Do you mind if we table that question while she finishes her presentation? Sure. Awesome. Glenn? Uh, I was going to kind of ask the same thing and wonder if it was connected to absentee landlords. There's some potential for that. Okay, go ahead. Next slide. <laughs> So on the road to success. Um, so I found that um, in this process of kind of keeping up with these numbers, um, what was most beneficial was uh, having the right email. Um, having the right email is the key to receiving the message. So in terms of uh, ensuring that the that building owners are getting the message and also assuming that they're getting the message, um, such as when we sent out letters, um, we assume that if we're going to send a letter to the address, they're going to receive it. But for some reason, there were quite a few, um, uh, probably around 10 buildings that just did not get the letter at all. Um, and But when we sent out emails, uh, as long as it was the right, the correct contact, we could almost assume that they had seen the message, but just hadn't gotten to it yet. So we found that um, emails were, were the best way to, to do outreach in terms of contact. And then also... Um, keeping up with those contacts and ensuring that, you know, we have the right, uh, the right channel uh, for, for who we're supposed to reach um, in making those calls. So this is a little diagram. I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool to, this is on our road to success. This is the wind. This isn't gas, no, or greenhouse gas <laughs> coming out. This is the wind. Um, and then the car is going in, into the city. So that's that. So next slide. So off season, um, uh, the off season prep, and I kind of got a little philosophical with this a little bit. <laughs> uh, pave the way as you walk it, right? So um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, you know we've had a lot of unanticipated. Um, I don't want to call them hurdles, but I think uh, constraints anticipated constraints as we've kind of rolled out the program, and so understanding that you know we have to be not only flexible with the building owner, but I think with ourselves as well, especially in terms of like the compliance numbers. And so, you know, seeing it through that this is the first year. And so next year, I think it's going to be interesting to compare, you know, what those engagement numbers look like, what uh, compliance numbers look like. And, you know, is this, you know, comparable for the future, right? Um, so paving the way as we walk it, I think off season as a part of the, the off season prep is, is a good reference. Um, and then also updating Malka. So we've been using the Malka system to kind of do that back end management. I mentioned we use um, Energy Star for the, the front of the house, essentially, um, and listing the building owners where they, that's where they upload all their data. Um, they put in all their information. And then at back house, uh, we do processing through Malka. And uh, as we've been working on Malka, they've also been working on their own system, right? And so uh, we've had a lot of um, interesting um, things, <laughs> I guess, uh, and uh, moments occur in which, um, you know, the Malka system either glitched or like maybe there was a reset and we had to kind of start things over again. And so there was a bit of a back and forth on that. And so updating Malka during the off season, um, which is, again, the back of the house um, would be really beneficial, meaning just don't do it during compliance season, <laughs> which would be really helpful. Um, and then and then if, uh, keeping the building owners uh, in, involved and engaged through our newsletter. So um, I'm not sure if we ever if we're mentioned or if everyone's on the newsletter, you should definitely sign up um, if you go to www. <laughs> Brisbane CA forward slash BBEP. Um, we actually have the link on the top right um, to the newsletter um, where you can actually sign up for our newsletter to stay posted on, you know, some of the upcoming um, engagements that we have going on, as well as, you know, any adjacent programming that may be beneficial to our building owners. So 
um, we're, that's one way that we definitely, definitely do plan to stay engaged um, with uh, building owners. Um, and like I said, because email is the best way to maintain contact, because you're going directly to that person in their email, the message is there, you, you know, they've got it. Um, that's, that's one way we've been working through that. And then gain, also gaining contacts through the newsletter. So as I've just promoted the newsletter, uh, I imagine, you know, Adrienne or Karen or whoever is representing the BBEP program can also, you know, share the newsletter um, and, uh, you know, spread the word about it. And then also, you know, continuing to attend webinars. I know Adrienne attended a few webinars on uh, building efficiency programs and just continuing to learn more. I think some uh, that as a part of the, the off, off season prep is, is really beneficial. I noticed when, you know, I was doing compliance and also, you know, taking calls and then doing emails, like I was like all over the place, <laughs> you know, trying to manage everything at once. And so, um, you know, attending webinars when it's not compliance season is, is really helpful. That way, you know, I can just focus on, you know, setting up a call or an email or whatever the, the case may be that's presented in front of me in that moment. Um, also, always assuming, of course, positive intent. I think, you know, sometimes with the building owners, they're a little bit, you know, off or, you know, sometimes we all get a little busy. And so ensuring that they're doing the best that they can, I think, you know, spreading that 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 sense of positivity actually goes a long way. And so um, that's something that I've learned to be really beneficial. Also updating the contact list as we go along. So we have a long list of contacts. We call it the master building list. And uh, we're hoping um, you know, to continue to update that, but also um, you know, keeping that up to date and maintaining that. It's, it's a lot of maintenance, but it's, it's worth it um, in the end. Um, and then uh, planning the newsletter engagements uh, throughout the season is, is also really helpful to kind of prep and draft those. Um, even if they're in alignment, I think that's really cool. Oh, Mary, you have a question. Oops, yes, I have a couple. Okay. So compliance season starts and ends when? Oh, this is a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just curious because, you know, we're looking at an off season prep. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so I, I would say the off season is kind of now, but okay. some of the compliance work for the last season will continue as you saw, because some of those, um, you know, first year reports are take some time to have, have a little bit more follow-up than I think we probably will have in future years. The compliance deadline is May 15th. Um, okay. so generally this is spring. This is always, um, the reporting is always done on a calendar year, January to December. So it's kind of like your taxes. So okay. you know, taxes are due April 15th, benchmarking reports, May 15th. Um, we send out a reminder. Our ordinance requires that we send out a reminder, I believe by three months ahead, or maybe it's only two, but we sent them in early February this year. So I would really say like sometime around the beginning of the year, February is kind of when it starts, although it okay. really doesn't, you know, the, it, as with any, you know, H&R block or something like they're really going to get busy as that deadline approaches. Yeah. That's, that's the same for us, I would say. And then the other question, um, Malka, um, who is responsible for that system? Malka is the name of the company. Um, oh, okay. We went through a vetting process oh, with, okay. our, um, with our consultants, the Energy Coalition, uh, and they recommended um, it's uh, in, in some respects a startup um, software company. Um, they had been working with the Department of Energy, saw some gaps in some of the free or, um, you know, some of the existing tools that were out for managing um, oh, okay building uh, benchmarking reporting as, as well as some of the beyond benchmarking and auditing and those kinds of things. So um, they had received numerous um, grants from, from the DOE to kind of start to stand up this oh. software. Um, and I think that goes a bit to what Nyla was mentioning with, you know, they, they're still working on updates. I think we're in an interesting position because, um, because they are so new and that has caused some challenges. They've had some glitches as new features came out, um, but they've also been extremely responsive to our concerns. We've been able to get answers right away, get things fixed really quickly. 
And I think one of the things that's really cool is that they've been really incorporating our feedback and, and really kind of looking at us as, as a test case because they haven't had a lot of other city customers at this stage. Um, so we've been able to really help recommend new features that would be helpful for us that they are generally working to implement or um, trying to work into other contracts that they are going after to continue to build out their software. All right, great. Thank you. Those are my two questions. <laughs> awesome. No other questions. Well, learning, the learning never ends. Um, so this is the pathway. <laughs> All righty. Um, next slide. <laughs> So priorities going forward, um, I think outreach is definitely, so in terms of uh, season, um, I kind of like that now. I, I use it as a frame of reference, like an off season, meaning when we're not doing physical like compliance reviews at the moment. Um, but now I kind of like it, you know? So like roll, as we roll into the season, I think the first phase would, would be beneficial if you started with outreach and, and phone calls. That way you initially know what numbers aren't working, who isn't working there anymore, um, you know, updated contacts and such. Um, so phone calls um, and emails. And when I say search directories, I mean also kind of like just doing some, some researching online. Sometimes that's beneficial if, you know, a company has relocated or something has happened um, at the time, you can always look that up. So I, I would say in terms of like priorities going forward, um, you know, phone calls and, and emails would always be a first start. And then second would be like that, that second phase of engagement, um, maintaining the, the newsletter um, engagement. So I think this is also kind of an interesting question to ask in terms of of, um, you know, do you do this in in season or off season now that we've kind of got that frame of reference. Um, uh, and then also, you know, how to webinars on, you know, how to align, you know, programming features. Um, and mean, meaning, you know, uh, other pr programs that are either within the city of Brisbane or, um, you know, being offered or distributed like, like by Bayran or other, you know, organizations that may be in alignment, um, you know, how can we either host webinars or, you know, uh, recommend those uh, to, to uh, some of our folks. Uh, and in terms of compliance, of course, in the last phase of that would just be compliance. So sending email updates. So in terms of, you know, this is the new compliance year, you know, um, you know, recommend recommendations, things of that sort um, and getting started with the new season and then following up with the phone call. So I, I foresee if I were to do this all over again, uh, you know, what would I do? I would start with an email um, and then I would make phone calls and then um, if no reply, then I would, again, go back to, to email again. So I would kind of uh, go between the two in terms of compliance. Uh, but that would be the entire, you know, rollout in terms of priorities on how I would uh, do it again. Next slide. So the building efficiency fellow. So this was, uh, you know, kind of capstone, right, um, was, you know, what was my role? Um, so my role was, of course, to focus on the program in terms of benchmarking. So um, work with other businesses. Oh. Oops. oh, Adrian, I think we can see your screen. Okay, no worries. Um, so benchmarking in terms of, you know, ensuring I was uh, day to day, I was managing the, the Brisbane efficiency program. So ensuring, you know, when I talk about the phone calls and the emails, um, in terms of the engagements, most of that was, you know, directly to, uh, to me. And so um, ensuring the, the tracking and reporting um, progress, and even like suggested improvements um, along the way, uh, we haven't, you know, I haven't provided too many of those, but I think, um, I've got a lot of information. And so actually one of the building owners told me that the reason why she had such a low EUI is because she replaced all of like the pipes and like her sinks. Like it was something about water and like piping that she had like reset for like the whole building. And essentially um, it made her, her building was more water efficient because of that. So um, that was an interesting um, thing to learn. And then customer support. So uh, day to day I'm answering phone calls and emails. And so um, that was kind of that support side of it. And then management and reporting. Um, that was kind of like just compiling all of that as I presented to you in the presentation. And so that is all that I have for you today. Um, thank you for listening. Adrian. if there's anything that you'd like to add to that. Um, yeah, that's all for me. Oh, 
I'm just going to go ahead and stop share because I think something weird happened with my share. Um, and I see we have a hand from Michelle. So I just wanted to kind of have this time for questions. And I know there was a question that I asked to table so we can come back to that as well. If you, if you want to do the tabled question first, since they were first in line, that's fine with me. Sure, sure. So the question, as I understood it, was just kind of what is our plan to close the gap with that 13% of folks who hadn't been responsive at this point? Is that correct? Um, so at this point, um, you know, we, we knew we wouldn't have 100% in year one. Um, we are going to continue to try to reach out to uh, other folks. Um, we have talked with San Francisco and San Jose about what kind of messaging and outreach they do um, because they have programs that have been in existence for longer. Um, and so we have some, some templates from them in terms of notification letters and non-compliance letters. So we will probably be looking to create some of that uh, similar um, specific for our program and try to roll that out. Um, as Nyla noted, a, the problem for a, a lot of these folks, I would say most of these folks, is that we are just not having a lot of success in finding the right people or getting, getting the emails, phone calls, even the letters um, actually received by somebody. So I think there's going to have to be probably some deeper digging on who these contacts are um, and you know, looking further into what our planning department may have, what our building business licensing staff may have, if we can track down any better contact information than we, you know, have so far, um, if things have been updated or anything along those lines. So, um, you know, it's gonna, gonna be a little bit of, um, you know, <laughs> research work to, to try to find those contacts. Um, but I think we're really talking uh, like 13 buildings or 14 buildings, something like that. So, um, you know, I'm not super concerned, but it is going to, you know, that, that like 80-20 rule essentially is in effect here. Um, we did a little better than that, but they're going to require a lot more time, I think, to get those last few percent. Thank you, Adrian. Sure. Shall, I, shall I go ahead now? Um, so first of all, I, I just want to say, Nala, a uh, great job. And I really loved um, talking about plain language and being able to curate and translate the, the information uh, for the people that you're working with so that they can understand, better understand uh, what, what you're asking and what, what's needed. And I think that's really important. Um, and I, I think that you did a remarkable job. I have some suggestions that maybe would help us. Um, you know, always the carrot is better than the stick, especially for this type of thing. And so one of the things that I think would be a nice reward for people who have participated is to draft uh, public relations statements or uh, press releases for them. Um, stating, you know, that they complied and how they did and all that good stuff so that they can put that out to people who know who they are. Um, I found that was really an important thing when AAA, when I worked at AAA and AAA participated in things like the, you know, lead, you know, in silver building and all that type of thing. And putting that together for companies, I think would really help them, uh, actualize some benefits uh, PR wise from what's going on. And I think the other thing is, is that I think we should work really strongly with uh, um, certain outreach organizations like the Luminary, which is the publication from the Brisbane Chamber of Commerce and write an article about the success so far that we've had with the building efficiency program and perhaps quote some of the uh, you know, interview some of the people who successfully completed the program, like the woman you talked about with the pipes, um, and show the benefits and quote people. People love to hear themselves quoted, um, especially in the press. And the Luminary does have a large readership in the business community. And so partnering with the Luminary and writing an article for them uh, would be really beneficial. I wish I'd thought about this last month before you were leaving. <laughs> 
But if you want to do it, Nyla, it'd still be awesome. I know that they would publish it. They're always looking for great business articles. And this would make a great business article. I remember going to an early beep meeting, beep, whatever we call it, meeting, and suggesting that uh, the people at the Doubletree actually use the smart uh, strips to control the uh, power usage in the, in the uh, rooms. And he was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. We, we could save so much money. Um, I don't know if they did it or not, but that type of easy, uh, plain speaking benefits really resonates with people and encourages them to go through the hard stuff to get to the benefit. And the more we can do that, I think the better we'll be moving forward. And remember that, you know, we always look, we need to look at it from their perspective of what's in it for me, what's in it for us, what's in it for my bottom line, and really promote that aspect of the building efficiency program, uh, rather than, you know, guilt tripping about climate change, etc. So just, uh, I think you did a tremendous job. Thank you. I just wanted to thank Nyla for her good work. I think it would have been really tough to roll out this program without the help of an excellent and committed intern. And so I'm sure the whole committee joins me in thanking you and saying, we're going to miss you. That was it. Like, what are you doing next summer? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, is there another question, Mary? Oh, no, just, you know, just to thank you. Um, your presentation was great and you are a very good presenter. So keep it up. Um, yeah, kept everyone engaged. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much on behalf of the entire committee, Nyla. We wish thank you the best going forward. All the best, Nyla. Yep, thank you What's so much. What's next for you? That's a good question. I think I, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, I know I want to work on another program going forward, similar to my role here in that my whole focus was the building efficiency program. Um, I, I still want to, you know, work as like a coordinator doing that somewhere else. And so we'll see what that looks like. I haven't really, you know, panned everything out clearly, but we'll see. I'll have to be in touch. Well, happy trails. Yeah, we appreciate all your work, your positivity. I, I echo what the committee says. We're going to miss your smiling face at our meetings. Definitely. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a challenge, certainly, to fill your shoes uh, <laughs> and, uh, and keep things going, so. Much appreciation. Thank you. Um, and, and Nyla, if you do want to write an article for the luminary before you're out of here, I'm sure we could get it published. And no one would be more qualified to write it than you. I will you get your by, you could get your byline there and put it in your resume. Published author. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Are there any other questions or comments on this item? All right. Um, I'm going to resume my screen share. I'm getting um, messages about my audio quality and low system resources. So I hope I'm coming through okay for you guys. I'm going to probably turn my video off. So hopefully my computer can keep up because I think I've closed everything that I can. Uh, and <laughs> and you still run the meeting. I can um, hear you fine. Okay, great. Um, all right, so I'm going to resume screen share. And I think next up is uh, staff updates. So are we... Do you guys want me... Who's going first? Uh, you are welcome to go ahead and go first if you'd like. Say, say again. You. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. It's really weird not hearing myself with the headphones on, so I've taken them off for now. Um, you guys hearing me okay? Yes. Yeah. 
I, I did want to talk a little bit about um, the election last meeting. And I think we want to do something a little more structured going forward. You know, we kind of looked over what the process is and there, we don't need seconds on nominations. People can nominate someone else or themselves. So we think that we're going to say, send out an email and say, nominate people by email and then have a paper or a Zoom vote so that there isn't any, it's clear, not influenced unduly. It seemed like it kind of all just got a lot of momentum and, you know, it, we thought we needed seconds on nominations. We, we're not interested in going back and redoing anything and going forward and you guys are capable and will do a good job, but we would like to let whoever is interested get on the ballot and then let everybody be able to vote. So I just kind of want to mention that. Um, could just a couple things that I also wanted to talk about, Glenn, I think the article got forwarded or maybe it just went to staff about cool pavements. So we did a little, we looked at a study that Glenn had sent us from, I feel like they studied somewhere hot and somewhere cold. Was it Boston? and Arizona yeah. about um, cool pavements. And there were pluses and minuses and there are a lot of factors. Some of the ways to get cooler pavements is um, concrete because it's lighter than asphalt. And there are reasons in terms of putting down pavement that, we, that concrete doesn't work as well as concrete for us in um, getting to utilities that are underneath it cracking and a number of different things. We did see that our research, we definitely took from that. We should use light colored aggregate. That's one thing that we can easily and clearly do right away. Um, there have been times with slurry seals that we've used black rock and I don't think that we need to. There's been kind of a um, perception from the public, not necessarily everybody, that dark black pavement is fresher and newer and better. So Maybe we think about doing some education, an article about, hey, you know, lighter, lighter pavements are better for the environment and black doesn't necessarily mean that, that it's newer and better and it's gonna last longer. So I just wanna to touch on that. Um, this is, a, I guess this is a note for Bob. We were talking about a star article on the open space plan for October. So that was more of a note to talk to, talk to Bob about that. Um, Still working on the Guadalupe or Crocker Trail. I'm not sure if we've officially changed the name yet or not, doing some really, really preliminary designs. So I don't think I saw any of you guys, but the engineering staff did, um, you know, walked the whole trail and marked everything down that's, um, what did I put down? All the features, all the utilities that are near it, where we might need curb to keep vehicles from backing up onto the trail where it's next to a parking lot. It took four, you know, half days going out and doing that. So we're kind of marching a little forward on the design. And we did talk in-house about Ford Road and adding um, pavement maintenance or, or maintaining that or analyzing how that's slipping, but it would take, we'd need funds. We're talking about a retaining wall. You can't just fill in quarry road. And we talked about the fact that it's, we don't think that it's at the state to need um, to be narrowed down with barricades. That's the only thing we could do immediately. So if, you, if anybody thinks differently, we, we can talk about that. We can talk about it offline. That's what I've been working on the past month. Glenn? Thank you so much, Karen. Um, is that everything from you? Yeah. All right, how about Bob, um, Bob next? All right, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can, thank you. Okay, so I went to the recent, um, sat in at the Natural Resources Coordination Meeting, and I'll give some brief updates on the work they've been doing. They, uh, San Mateo County, they've been treating radish at the recent fire area, and that has been successful. They've been doing scrub work and 
Wax Myrtle Ravine on the McKesson parcels under Crocker Tank, and that's looking good. They've removed fennel and they've been lupin seeding there. They've also removed fennel at Terra Bay on the South Slope in South San Francisco. They've been working on the Portuguese broom on the McKesson parcels northwest of the quarry. Uh, they're still treating the gorse area that burned um, on the other side of Guadalupe Canyon, getting that for re-sprouts. Uh, they did address the jabata and poppers grass. They said that the largest collection is in wax myrtle ravine and not yet in the HCP, so they can't treat that collection. And the county is hoping to do another round of treatment along Radio Road and along Guadalupe Canyon Parkway, which I know everyone's aware that there's stuff coming up there, but they don't have that countered yet. So that was the update for the works they've been doing on the mountain. And the next update is for Habitat Day. We had talked about going back out off of Harney Way, but with uh, COVID and getting in a van, that didn't seem like a good idea. And we haven't been to Lagoon for a few years. And that's looking like that could use some help. So we're scheduled to go back to Lagoon Road and clean up there like uh, that used to happen in the past. So that will be on the same day, September 18th. There's the uh, Lagoon poster. <laughs> I love <laughs> it, Bob. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, um, so yeah, that'll be September 18th. I got the supplies today and I got some trash pickers and I've actually never been to Habitat Day out there, but um, Jeff and I were talking today and um, we seem pretty set up for that one. So those are the ends of my updates. Great. I see Glenn has her hand up. So I'm not sure if, if um, Adrian and Karen, you were going to talk about this later, but a few weeks ago, I sent you a note about a city tree, at least I believe it's a city tree, uh, at the intersection of Alvarado, I'm always getting streets clean, uh, mixed up, Mendocino, uh, yeah, Alvarado and Mendocino, it's in a little kind of a triangle there, and it's dead, it's a Monterey pine, and I was hoping that we could put a native tree in there because it's not next to anybody's house. It's not going to push up any sidewalk. Um, I was just wondering what was going on with that. Yeah, I think that was, I think that might have been longer than a couple weeks ago because I forgot to put it in my staff updates. We're looking at whether we can plant the tree you recommended there, but okay. it's, it's on the radar, definitely. Okay, great. Thanks. Great, Glenn, can you also send me an email um, and keep so that I have a, a note about it so I can we can follow up on it and tree issues? Okay. Thank you so much. I wasn't quite sure who I should send it to, but I'll find that email and I'll forward it to you. Definitely staff, but I'd, I'd like to be in the loop on that one since that's okay. kind of tree subcommittee as well. Um, do we wanna go on with Adrian or do we wanna do Jason's question? Go ahead with Jason's question. Great. Hey, it's, uh, just, it's just super quick. It says, thank you, Bob. I love you, the whimsy of the, the lagoon. And thank you for the special map that you sent uh, subcommittee. It was awesome. Thanks again. You're welcome. I think that brings us to staff eight updates from Adrian. Sure. I actually have a pretty short list this month compared to usual. Um, uh, this Friday, we have our volunteer training for the disposable foodware outreach um, uh, with the county staff. Um, so Barbara and Jason and one community volunteer. Um, so last call, anybody else wants to join us, you're welcome Friday at noon. Um, it should be a really short training and um, I have a reminder email that uh, you guys will probably be getting tomorrow with some prep material that will, some of the materials will go over on Friday. Um, is, it, is it possible to video that so the rest of us can watch it? Hmm. If it is, please do. If not, uh, I understand. Okay. Uh, I will, I will think about that. It, it might be possible, but I don't think we would probably publicly post it. I'll reenact um, it for Michelle. I'll reenact it for her. <laughs> um, yeah. We are also going to, part of the time will we'll also be spent talking about the businesses that need to be reached out to and, and kind of divvying that up. So um, thus the in encouragement to, if you have any interest in participating, to join beforehand, not try to jump in after the fact. 
Um, uh, I did want to note, um, because I know that this committee uh, members um, take use of the uh, app to send in service requests. So if you missed the memo on that, there's a new My Brisbane app that replaced the Go Request app. Um, I have a link that I'll pop in the chat here in a moment. Um, if you haven't seen that um, for web page um, about where to download it. Uh, and then um, you also probably saw um, that the e-ink signboard was installed at the Ridge uh, yeah. earlier, early this month. Um, oh, I forgot to check to see if it actually happened today. It was scheduled to be installed at the community park today. Um, okay. I, I did not get an update whether, whether that um, was completed today or not. But I didn't see it on the way home today, but I also wasn't kind of looking. Didn't that, notice was, it. Um, that was per the, uh, the update from last week about the, the one at the Ridge having been installed a couple of weeks ago. Um, there were a couple of articles that were shared. Um, and then uh, one that Glenn had asked um, to share some images from that I think we'll go ahead and do that under the subcommittee updates. Glenn, I just had it in my in my notes for this section to, to not forget about that. Um, yeah, besides that, I spent a good chunk of the last uh, several weeks um, participating in the statewide um, it's a California Climate and Energy Coalition um, Forum. Um, it used to be called Seek SEEC, the Statewide Energy Efficiency Collaborative. They, they got rebranded because of some changing in funding. It used to be a great annual conference that I participated in. It was virtual the last couple of years. Um, Mark and I, uh, Mark from the Energy Coalition and I, along with Barry Hooper from San Francisco and Emily, I'm going to forget her last name, Salazar, I think it was, uh, from the state of Washington, did a panel presentation um, last week on um, building decarbonization through building efficiency program, building benchmarking program. Um, so they just shared the resources from that and a whole bunch of other sessions. So if anybody's interested, I can also forward you the, the email they just sent out yesterday with the link to all of the sessions. There was a lot of a lot of conversation statewide about um, how we decarbonize uh, and environmental justice and electrification. So I think that covers it for me. Um, I see a couple hands from Barbara and Mary and then it looks like Glenn as well. Oh, bloody hell, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, uh, Mary, that's how I'll deal with that. <laughs> okay. Um, I just have a question about the, the new app, My Brisbane. So the Go Request app that I have, will all my requests transfer over? I mean, how are we going to track that information? So um, anything uh, that's pending? I loaded the app and everything transferred over, yes. Oh, it does. Oh, okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Oh, one other thing. Uh, thank you. I noticed on Quarry Trail, and tell me if I'm crazy, but I think the garbage cans got a little upgrade where they put new tops on. So the um, the hole's much smaller, so garbage doesn't fly out when it gets real windy. And it looks like they got a paint job or their new garbage cans. But I noticed a couple of them along the trail. So thank you. Hey, Adrian, what yeah. was the first thing you were talking about? It was... The, the training on Friday? Oh, yeah, I was going to ask, is it all right if I um, push that out to social media and see if anybody else wants to join us or do you think that's not appropriate? Um, they should contact me like tomorrow. It's Friday at noon. Um, if they can join Friday at noon and they want to participate, I'm certainly open to that. So, okay. um, but I need to, I need to know by a Friday morning at the absolute latest so we can get them the stuff. So have I'll them make that clear and see if I can drum up another person, maybe just off, just low possibility, but we'll see. Sure. That'd be great. I'd be, I think we'd all be happy to have another person. Otherwise you're, you're going to all have long lists. <laughs> Uh, Glenn, did you have something as well? 
I was just going to say I'm interested in seeing the stuff that you, you know, the information that you exchanged on your panel. So if you yeah. were to email, email it to me, that would be great. Thanks. I will do that. Excellent. Anything else before we move on? All right. All right, on to subcommittee reports. Let's start with open space. Oh, am I supposed to lead? We've we've been meeting and we're talking about uh, the proposals to um, expand the priority preservation area by what is now a buffer zone, um, capturing some um, parcels that now have, I think we've talked about this before a couple of years ago, that now may have development on two sides if you eliminate that restriction, then you add those buffer zone parcels to the priority preservation area. That means that council would try to make attempts to purchase those so that then the ones that we do have further up don't end up with development on both sides, which is by the nature of the plan less desirable. So we're putting that together to bring to OSEC and see if there's a recommendation to to take it forward to council. And the committee also wanted to look at what effort had been made in the past few years to let those property owners know that the city might be interested in purchasing them or that donation was possible with tax credits that they'd have to figure out with their own tax advisor. So we're actively meeting about that. Yeah, so we really want to uh, rework some of the letters that we sent in the past and make them more of an appeal, not from the city, but from the people of Brisbane and the Open Space and Ecology Committee about um, possible, you know, tax benefits of donating your land to open space in perpetuity. So we're going to work on that as well. I think that's an important aspect of it and making sure these letters go out on a regular basis and in a very personal uh, way. I thought I saw Glenn's hand up, but then my screen went, went and scrolled on me. It is there she is. So I'm not sure if this is the right place to ask this question, but uh, last week I took a hike with Beth Grossman, who many of you know. Um, she spent the pandemic getting to know all the trails on the mountain. And we went up on the acres and she showed me some really spectacular trash dumps up there. Um, one looks like a former homeless encampment. And that's the worst one because there's a lot of plastic, some old clothes, um, probably some organic material in there. And then there were also, um, some old boilers and a lot of iron and steel in various places. So is it the city's responsibility to, to clean up the acres? What, what should we do? And um, I was thinking about sending in a go request, but I didn't because trying to pinpoint exactly where this was is difficult. What you're going to have to do, and Beth and I talked about this, um, if the city can can remove some of this trash, I would suggest the homeless encampment. Beth is willing to guide somebody in there. Um, it's up by the water tank. So I'm not sure this is the right place to bring it up, but I did want to bring it up. So uh, Bob, are you um, are you tuned yeah, in right now? Me. Maybe you can I'm explain how they could. Uh, geolocate where these spots are because if they're on private property I, I, I maybe in a homeless case of a homeless encampment we would do something anyways but some of the things on private property we might be notifying that property owner versus have a code enforcement issue versus doing it ourselves so we really kind of do need to know where it is and I, I think I think uh, can, can I care yeah I, I think that I think that the garbage that uh, she's seeing uh, the homeless type stuff is Part of those parcels, like the 89, 90, 91, the boiler might be, is that, was that in the ivy covered area, uh, Glen, over by uh, closer to Paul Road or no? It was close to Margaret is where it Margaret. was. Margaret, okay, that's been there yeah. forever. Oh, that's, that's the one up yeah. top near the star? Uh, <laughs> no, th this is, I think what she's talking about, there's a, there's a hot water heater 
and we call it the printing press. There's something that looks like a. Yeah. Yeah. It is it, a printing it, press. Yeah. Yeah. There's, been a, there's there one there's a printing press, and there's one there's one up at the top of Paul near near the star hidden in the Ivy too. So I'm right. asking. I think the garbage, though. I think that's more recent. I've seen it, and I could point that out to somebody. Um, I know exactly where that is. Um, it's like clothing and like a sleeping bag. Yeah. 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 I, Sounds... I could point that out. Yeah. If you're saying it's those lots, that's private property. Yeah, I think so. Is it? I thought it was acres. Some well, acres, acres are some acres private. are private property. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, I could yeah. I could bounce it off Bob. I can we could start with the garbage. I could I could go up there and show it to Bob and he could tell me if it's private or public. Okay. Well, I was hoping that Bob could tell you how to drop a pin and he had given you the map to hike around and see where you were relative to yeah um, that's what i mean I, I can do that oh thank you i don't have time so yeah, i can do it yeah the great. printing press i think is kind of charming so i don't want anybody to do anything about it i think it's kind of cool the, so, the yeah, printing the press metal is stuff is less likely to do damage but the the clothes and the plastic and stuff is a different story terrible yeah. yep terrible the printing press is practically like a, a local um tourist yeah. stop so um but yeah it's great i'm so glad jason that you can do that pin and then staff will figure out how to take it from there in terms of like notifying the public the private property owners or working with them somehow to get that cleaned up because we definitely do not need to be trashing our mountain we'll do, do i have any other um any other follow-up on open space i see shauna uh, am I unmuted now? Yes, yeah. I am. Okay, cool. Um, actually, when I was walking around the other day, um, I was stopped by two families in cars looking for the trailhead on Paul um, so that they could go hike to the top of the mountain. I don't know where they're getting this information. I was like, I don't think you're going to be able to park anywhere up there. Um, and then they got kind of bent with me and I was like, well, you, you know, that they were following Google Maps and they we're going too fast, but um, <laughs> that was another issue. But I don't know. There, there are people that are that are constantly coming in, like wanting to. I, I don't know whether they've gotten a, a um, like some map thing has told them that there's a way to get on top of the mountain without going through the you know where you have to pay for parking on um, Guadalupe Canyon. But I mean, like they're driving around not knowing how to get up there, and they're looking for Paul or Margaret and and you know, trying to park their cars on those narrow streets that have no parking. Um, I, I don't know if there's any solution to this, but this is, these are the things that I find when I'm out doing my, my walking on the streets, on the upper streets. Um, you know, I do, I do a daily hike around the valley uh, and that's what I've been coming across lately. So um, I think it'd be great if anybody who has a similar experience and is willing to engage with the strangers ask them where they're getting their information because they're you're right Shauna there might be something out there like a google maps that has a trailhead listed somewhere there's really not an appropriate trailhead and you can we can submit corrections but we need it would be helpful to know where to submit them to and where they're getting this information from Glenn I was just going to say I'm pretty sure it's social media the okay. uh, informal skate park on Quarry Road yeah. I, this was a while ago. I was out there a year or so ago and um, talking to some of the kids out there and they said, oh, it's on, you know, it's on Facebook. That's where there are people coming out there from as far away as Santa Cruz, as I understand it, to, um, <laughs> to, to use the informal skateboard park. So I'm not sure there's any way to stop it. Maybe not. Um, Jason? Um, yeah, just for giggles. I had a couple of millennials yell at me they came down the driveway and then you, and they said where do you how do you get to king's road and i said oh you just go down over here you would have marked that better you should mark it better i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> okay we could do like Molinas and take down all the street signs yeah or, or or perhaps we need to have a little sign saying no, no trailhead access on Paul, you know, at the base of Paul or no park, no, you know, you know, non-residential parking up here. Yeah. Well, Paul's a private road, so 
That would be up to the people on Paul, I think. Yeah. So if somebody so. knows somebody who lives on Paul, you might drop a bug in their ear. Um, okay, I'm feeling like we're pretty well done with open space. Um, climate action plan that's staff led, we have not met. Um, do we have anything coming up? Uh, you know, I think I'm gonna uh, send a, a doodle poll around. Um, we haven't had much action lately, but there were some updates in the uh, recent RICAPS meeting this week about some updates they've made to the forecasting tool that we may want to um, start taking a look at. That tool is available so we can use it um, for our forecasting, you know, internally without having it um, be part of a CAP update. Um, so I think that's something that we may want to potentially um, take a look at as a subcommittee and see, you know, now that we have the climate emergency declaration adopted, um, you know, start, start thinking about um, what that might actually look like to implement. So Great. Look out I for look, an email. I look forward to the doodle poll. Um, events, either uh, Salmon or Rogers. Um, we met uh, on Friday, um, Adrian, Michelle, and I, to talk about um, what we were going to do for activities. And we have a long list. We're going to do the flags as we did last year. We still have leftovers. Michelle had a great idea about um, ordering um, cloth masks that adults and children can design. And so Adrian, I think has already ordered those. Um, and I think we them. have, have you? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, sorry to interrupt you. Go yeah. ahead and finish. <laughs> and um, several, I think we were gonna do the um, solar panels, you know, have some literature on that. And I can't remember, there was a few others. One of the things we were going to do is have tree gator uh, there so yeah, that people can right. sign up to get a tree gator to help water their street tree. And um, I will say that at this point, I won't be at Day in the Park because I have a work conflict, an out of town trip. Um, and it is for work. I would never have scheduled a personal trip against Day in the Park. It might be the second day in the park I've missed in the last 20 years, but we need um, coverage at the table desperately. Um, and I know that Barbara volunteered and Glenn volunteered both to take a shift at the table. Um, Mary has a conflict in the afternoon. Um, and so I hope that every single one of you signs up for an hour to an hour and a half of of being at the table. It is an amazing thing to have people come by and talk and ask questions and pick up pamphlets and just being there. And also it is really wonderful because, um, you know, kids come by and they, we've, we've developed these different activities for them to do. So they're gonna have uh, fabric markers to decorate their own masks so that they feel like happy to wear this protective device that could hopefully save them from, you know, contracting COVID or whatever. And so we really try to, and then the planet flags, uh, painting planet flags, which has been so popular in the past. And usually the open space and ecology and the mountain watch booths are next to each other. So we get a lot of uh, people interested. So I, I think it's a, one of the reasons I just hate missing it is that it's such an incredible opportunity to connect with our community. And so I hope each and every one of you decides to sign up for uh, an hour to an hour and a half of, of booth duty and just enjoy um, our community and the first day in the park we've had in two years. So I, I encourage you, I, I wish I could catch an earlier flight home and maybe there's a slim possibility the trip will be canceled and I'll be there too. But please sign up uh, to do this duty at the Park. It is one of our most important um, outreach events to the entire community. Adrian, can you um, please send out a sign up sheet? I can do that. Absolutely. Um, so a couple, a couple of updates as I was scoping out what we had in leftovers from a couple of years ago. Uh, and the mask situation. Um, I did not find any extra unused fabric 
So all of the flags that I found um, in our boxes and bags uh, that we brought home from a couple of years ago have all been used up as far as I can tell. So if anybody um, would like us to also have flags again, then we're going to need to, uh, I don't recall how exactly we did it last time, um, if someone provided the fabric or if, I don't, I don't think we ordered it because I feel like I remember cutting fabric squares. <laughs> But I think it was when Claire was on the committee. Yeah, and Claire is. On yeah, the I think she, I think she that. purchased it. Yeah, she purchased the material, and we all cut. Yeah, the flags. Yeah. Uh, so we don't have any more um, material for flags at this point in time. Also, and this hopefully will be worked out very quickly. Um, the box of masks arrived, um, and was waiting for me when I got in this morning and I opened the box and the masks were black instead of white. Oh no. <laughs> and, uh, so I hopped on Amazon, of course, and tried to start a return and the items are not returnable. Um, oh. so I, I had my first Amazon chatbot experience and ultimately ended up with a non chatbot person on the other end and they refunded my money and said that uh, I should just try to order the white ones again and uh, keep the masks. So we have a hundred black masks to donate or give away or if we have any kind of way that um, I don't think the markers that we have will actually show up on them but perhaps some other kind of decoration that we could potentially get could and we could have those available for decoration. Um, maybe uh, uh, maybe we could offer some to the businesses that we're going to approach and say you need to change your disposables. Maybe we could say, hey, here's a little something to help out. With that would be good. Right? I mean, the carrot stick thing, we're asking them to do something and hey, here's some masks for your day-to-day -day operation. Uh, yeah. uh, idea. Metallic markers would show up on black masks. And and so would puff paint, but I really hesitate to use that because it is not environmentally correct. Yeah. I, puff paint or, 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 or markers? They're, I don't know about the metallic markers, but I know that the puff paint's not environmentally correct. But did you reorder the white ones? I did. Oh, good. Okay. So hopefully and, they will, they'll, they'll be there, I think, tomorrow or maybe Friday. Um, so uh, and, I might just have whoever whoever gets the gets the mail tomorrow open them and to make sure that they actually sent me the right ones this time. So okay. are, are we going to not do the flags then? And well, just we could just that? go get a couple of yards of fabric at, at Discount Fabrics. It would be maybe, I don't know, 20 bucks and... Uh, do you want me to try and run over there this weekend? Well, not this, maybe Sunday and get some fabric. I've used all of mine for ma mask yeah. making. I don't yeah. have any more white. <laughs> but I, they have yeah, you still take a, yeah. That's up to the group. I mean, if we have some masks, um, I don't know that we need them um, because we're not going to, you know, in, in years past, we had a place where we were hanging them and we weren't going to do that this year since most people will probably want to do the mask and take it with them rather than creating the fat flag and leaving it with us. So, yeah. Um, I don't know, but if folks feel that it's necessary, I mean, 20 bucks is not a big deal probably. Yeah. And uh, like Barbara just suggested, we could buy sheets and wash them and do that, which is also a good idea. But I've found that sometimes just buying brand new fabric, uh, it, as opposed if we, anybody has, you know, good, high quality cotton white sheets. That's great. We can cut those up. So, but um, I, let me know and I will just, I'll just run over to Discount Fabrics and get a couple of yards and cut it up. I have some worn out sheets that could be ripped up. So say you're not getting my high quality sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have any that are white. I, <laughs> I already oh, used no. them for masks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's a delicate balance between something that's not new and something that's not I know. usable either. So, okay. Um, will, we, so um, I'm just going to throw this out there. Is there any since our big uh, one of our big projects and community outreach focuses is dark skies? Do we have any um, any activities for the day in the park 
centered around dark skies or dark sky activities? Not at this no, time. No, we, we didn't have a talk about that. No, it wasn't on our list. Yeah. Okay. If, you, well, if you've got what something, what would you suggest? Um, I only just had this idea at this moment, so I do not have a suggestion. <laughs> However, I will try to come up with one, although I am not on the events subcommittee. So, yeah. but you will I be think, there. Um, <laughs> I know if we have more volunteers for someone to man that, because right now we have flags and we have masks. Well, I will be at the booth all day, so okay. I will be okay. willing to participate in that. You um, know what might be good something. for dark skies is a. Uh, you know, helping people download a, a Starfinder app would be really oh. good. And, um, you know, also, I mean, we could also, of course, print a star chart, um, but also teaching uh, kids or people how to maybe an illustration of the Big Dipper and how to find the North Star using the Big yeah. Dipper. Because the Big Dipper is the yeah. most uh, visible easy to find constellation and if you extend the big dipper from the from the you know two points in the bowl it points it directly to the north star which is your you know primary navigation device in in the northern hemisphere is, is there but, something we can download and print to provide probably well, let's not yeah. let's not get into this too much right okay. now this is okay. really subcommittee material yeah um education outreach mary um, no updates. Um, I think, uh, oh, maybe Glenn has some updates, but I don't know. I mean, the library is not open in full capacity yet. And I think we were going to try and talk to Tamika, right, Adrian? You are correct. And I apologize. I have not yet done that. Okay. Okay. So um, the, the library is open. At least people are coming in and out at least part of the time. So let's yeah. set up something with Tamika. Um, Bayland subcommittee. Wait, Glenn has her hand Glenn up. Had oh, a sorry, question. Glenn, Glenn, my apologies. I did um, ask at the library when I was in there. It's, you know, I said I was on the open space committee and we wanted an exhibit. And what I was told is that all such requests now have to go through the county. Oh, no. Yeah, that, that I was directed to this website where you make suggestions. So I'm not sure how much uh, somebody local is going to be able to do for us in terms of um, turning us loose. I was a little bit offended by that, actually. Yeah. I didn't yeah. say I was, but I was. Um, but so I thought we'd been in contact with them all along. My understanding is that's, yeah. that's what I was told. Now, it could be that I was told this by somebody who was kind of new. This was not somebody that I was familiar with. So maybe she was unaware of prior arrangements, but it does look like the county has kind of systemized their mm. um, procedure for asking for exhibits. So I don't know how much luck we're going to have, but if we have a contact with somebody there, I would definitely follow it up. Just yeah, I, I think we should still reach out yeah. to Tamika um, because we had, you know, worked with her. Yeah, at the old library, and she seemed very interested and willing to continue to work with us once the new space was open. Um, if she says the same thing, then we'll we'll see what we can do with that. But I think it's still worth trying to follow up with Tamika. So I will um, noting that in the minutes and uh, apologies that didn't happen in the last month, but I will aim to do that soon. Excuse me, Adrian. This is Randy. Yeah. Hi there. Yes. Hey, if, if that doesn't work uh, with Tamika, follow up with me and I will talk it over with the director of the San Mateo County Library System. Fabulous. Oh, bless you. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Happy to help. Thanks. Glad to have you on tonight, Randy. Yay. <laughs> I, I, I will try to be a more regular attendee, even if I am in the dark. <laughs> I'm actually the one sitting in the dark here. Um, <laughs> So, uh, anything else on education and outreach? I don't have anything else. Oh. How about Bayland subcommittee? Um, the meetings have been continuously canceled. <laughs> Interesting. So nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, it gets on our consistency. That's good. Consistency. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't know why, but. Um, 
I don't know if you've received um, emails, Ross, at the Bayland subcommittee meeting and council, but I've been getting um, them. So. I haven't seen any, yeah. but I was assuming they were being canceled because I yeah. hadn't been seeing any. Yeah. Maybe you should get a check that you're on the email. You're getting the email. It's not getting dismounted or something, Ross. I'm just getting a sense of spam. There, there hasn't been point. any. We've also okay. canceled. Yeah. Okay. Check here. All right. Um, I think we should, can move on to Crocker Trail Frog Habitat. Am I correct? Yes. We haven't done anything after our meeting. It's been yeah. kind of busy because we're both on a couple of the other committees that have taken precedent. Yeah. But I, have, I'm start, I started a presentation, maybe a couple of slides, but um, there's still a lot of work to do. Um, so, so maybe, maybe by next, next meeting, just I'm, let's just say next meeting, we'll have a presentation to run by the OSEC com committee, and then we'll bring, we'll get you our input and any suggestions, and then we'll bring it to, um, I guess, Randy and... Um, Clay. Clay, thank you. Um, and uh, maybe okay. um, Adrian or Karen, Karen, can, can we schedule a meeting maybe for the third week of September for the committee? For staff and the committee? No, I mean, you know, just a subcommittee a meeting. A preview, just, yeah, yeah. Mary, Shauna, and yeah. I, and, yeah. and you. Okay. Can talk, ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> oh, invasive <laughs> species ordinance that has not moved forward, and that's I think I'm the uh, road. I'm I think I'm the one that's stuck. I'm supposed to do some writing on that, and I have not. So, uh, if I would love some help on that moving forward, uh, maybe I just. I have a full plate right now and that that has fallen by the wayside and I don't want it to. So can we schedule a meeting for that maybe early October? I'm I'm tra I'm out of town from the September 30th through October 9th. So. Okay, mid-October. Let's schedule that for mid-October. Is that good? Okay, I'll look back at the notes about what you are gonna produce and maybe do a reminder. Yeah, that would be really helpful. I just feel like my plate's been a little bit full and I'm not getting to what I really want to do. Are we good for invasive species? Are we good for them? What do you mean? Yes. We, we, we good. Yes. Everybody who yeah, decided we need okay. Yes, we, we love invasive species. Great. <laughs> That's That's right. Right. Especially when you can. my heart. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're in favor of invasive species. <laughs> Only if they're edible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, dark skies. Um, I put a substantial amount of work into the dark skies ordinance day and incorporating the feedback from the committee from last time. I particularly spent a long time on Jason's request that or suggestion that we um, and uh, sort of detailing out the, the blinking, flashing, fading lights. Um, I am a visual person, so I made myself, I wish I'd brought it and could hold it up to the screen here. Um, I made myself a little picture of a piece of prop, like a rectangle that's a piece of property. And on this piece of property, we had a star, a public art installation, and Barbara's personal she shack dis all night disco. Um, <laughs> I've been there. It's great. It's awesome. So I kind of went over like all the scenarios and um, made, I decided on some suggestions. I'll probably push those out via email. Um, so that we can, well, let me just say, um, I think everything else I did was really obvious, um, but I kind of wanted to think uh, very specifically about Jason's uh, suggestion because the prohibiting uh, blanket prohibition would have included, excluded things like the twinkling icicle lights that people sometimes hang from their eaves for Christmas. And, um, you know, a lot of people have the LED stars now that have multiple LEDs so they can kind of shift from blue to green to pink to whatever. All the colors of the rainbow. So, yeah. Ours and and um, 
my purse and I just went out and my personal feeling was that I didn't want to pull those things, but I did respect Jason's input and the input of the community at large. So I deleted that section and rewrote it to say that those, uh, those blinking, rotating, flashing things, whatever, um, must be low voltage, which uh, is defined in the ordinances under, I forget how many volts. Um, and it can only be on as a holiday decoration between the hours of 5 p.m. and midnight. So I, I went and I didn't eliminate them, but I heavily curtailed their use. And I'm hoping the committee at large feels that that is an adequate response. Um, we can also discuss it in the subcommittee. Um, I've asked Adrian to schedule us a subcommittee meeting for next week. So um, send us an email, what your thoughts are about that, if you have any specific thoughts. Um, of course, de dealt with some other things, but they were pretty straightforward. I was able to just like incorporate other people's things. Um, and let me, I'll, I'll get to you in just a minute, Jason. Um, the other thing is that I had committed to doing a flow chart for the ordinance. And um, I, I think if any committee members have a suggestion about what parts of the ordinance are confusing for them, and they would like to see covered in a flow chart that would be helpful for me um, because I've, I've read this, lived with this for a while now. And, it, and to me, it's like, I kept reading and I'm like, well, that's covered in the, the inventory spreadsheet or that's really obvious or, um, so I guess I, I, I would like some direction from the committee in general and specifically the subcommittee about what what sort of things would be useful to cover in a flow chart? So, um, Jason? Uh, sure, so did you say you're going to send out the before and after for folks to look at with uh, the, the wording and change? It's in the Google Docs. I can. I don't know that you have access to the Google, Google okay, because you're not on the subcommittee. I will copy and paste that section and specifically send it out. Okay, cool. Great. Okay. Barbara, I just think you've done such remarkable work on this ordinance. I am so, so proud of you and so happy that you worked this. I can't even begin to express that. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. It's kicking my butt and I'm kicking back. And I <laughs> done right now, but here we are. Really we actually get, get this passed. It will be a, an absolutely awesome ordinance. I'm I'm so excited about it. I really okay. am. Barbara. You're going to have to give me some input on, on what I'm doing with my flow charts because I haven't done a flow chart. <laughs> right like this. I haven't done a flow chart in about 10 years. <laughs> we didn't do that in the subcommittee. I, I had a few ideas way back when. Um, and flow chart may or may not be the right word for what I'm thinking of at this point in time, but it's, it's kind of more like a one page summary in, in some sense, or, you know, really, really, I think what, what we are, were, were aiming for with a flow chart was how do we get across the whole, however many long page ordinance to people in a brief form. You know, I was looking at the uh, model ordinance today at, for something because I wanted to refer back to something. And the model ordinance is 44 pages <laughs> and ours is 16. <laughs> so I was just like, I had a moment of like, yeah, go Barbara. <laughs> as complicated <laughs> as our ordinance is, it's much, much less so than the model <laughs> ordinance. So I felt really, I had a, like a tremendous moment of victory there for so <laughs> All right. Oh, yes. Anything else on dark skies from Ross or Michelle? No, I just think it's remarkable what, what you've uh, written and, and done so far with uh, Stop committee. saying that or it's all coming together. <laughs> yeah, I think it's coming together. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, uh, zero point planning. Uh, we haven't heard anything about that. Can we just, can staff tap? planning or whatever and just get an update on like is what's going on are we going to see it in november are we going to see it next year just give you know get them to give us kind of some just let them make sure they haven't forgot to notify us i think we're going to have a um pile driving concert 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, all those piles are different heights. They probably resonate at different frequencies. We can get them to play like. Um, and I can hear every freaking one of them all day long. <laughs> okay. the, same, uh, the Hallelujah Chorus for Christmas or something. <laughs> we'll have the Hallelujah Chorus when they're done with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, tree issues. I have not done anything on that. Um, as Michelle, I have a full plate. I've went back to work and kind of crashed into a lot of projects. As soon as the pandemic, everybody thought the pandemic was lifting. Everybody wanted something from me. So how um, about we schedule a tree issues meeting for January, November? Um, November, yeah, sure. Let's November, January. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can actually wrap dark skies up really fast and then we can, I can just focus entirely on tree issues. That would, that's kind of that my would be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, that's, I, I keep praying. I, I keep dreaming. Okay. <laughs> I keep it's not happening. Um, well, Glenn had, um, an article about trees that she, that, um, she wanted to share. I believe I shared it in the email for your um, meeting, but I have some images that she wanted to specifically point out. So I think now is probably the, the place for that, Glenn. So brilliant. I have I images for, for the final two and I don't remember if I put them in the wrong order. So this is, these are images of Los Angeles. And the reason I wanted Adrian to show them is that the upper picture is what good tree cover looks like in a climate context. And the lower picture is what a lot of Brisbane is beginning to look like. And I just wanted some images so that people could see what we should be looking for if we're thinking about trees to cool the city down, which I think, you know, after the summer, we've been spared so far, most of the heat waves, but our hot months are coming up. And I think if we want to keep the city cooled down and provide habitat for birds and other creatures, we need to look at something much more like the upper picture. So I, I just thought this was a pretty clear way of getting across um, what good tree cover looks like. That was the reason. So one of the challenges that we're really faced with good tree cover um, is the conflict between good tree cover and what people perceive as fire hazard. And, and part of that is tree health and taking good care of the trees that we have and making sure that they, even though we are in extreme drought already, making sure they are well watered. Um, and so, I mean, several, how, several people, including myself, have had their insurance companies threaten to cancel them due to, due to trees too close to the house. Um, it, I just think that focusing on good tree health is really, really important um, and trying to balance it with, uh, you know, uh, important uh, habitat maintenance in regard to fire hazards. And Randy, I'm sure you could speak to this at length but like, for instance, one of the things that has me greatly concerned is we've worked really hard on trying to mitigate our fire hazards uh, with, you know, the habitat interface and, you know, eucalyptus trees and all of that. And yet every day, every, well, four days a week uh, at the pool and when I'm swimming, you know, swimming and I'm thinking, wow, here is our, here is where we are really vulnerable for fire from the mountain to the town is along that corridor just below Humboldt and above the, the school where uh, broom and eucalyptus has completely taken over that corridor. Um, I believe the land is probably owned by the school district. I'm not sure. Um, and the city shares responsibility for that. But it is an incredible dangerous conduit for wildfire to spread from the mountain to the town. And how do you balance that with, you know, uh, proper tree cover and, and, and good tree health uh, of, of things that 
are an example in picture one versus picture two. So we need to really work hard to find a balance and to make sure that we're doing everything that's safe without eliminating our cooling um, protection that we get from trees and making sure that the trees that we have are well taken care of and really well watered. This is one of the reasons why I'm really interested in um, daylighting more of the natural water flow from the mountain instead of funneling it straight to the bay. Um, and so I'm not sure where to go with this, but it's, I think about it all the time, all the time. It's on so, my mind. I think that there's actually, um, a, from what I see on social media, there's actually a fairly decent public understanding that trees don't usually catch fire and spread fire unless there's a lot of tinder under them um so I, th I think i think we're mistaken to think that we have to attack trees to right um protect property um and i and i really think we need to continue to work on public education on that um i'm for, i'm kind of like i'm on my husband's computer so i'm going to ask tap you Adrian to please um, whenever you send out the organization for the tree subcommittee to um, include a note that we need to work on continue to hit uh, public education and fire hazards with trees you know and mm -hmm. send out like some some like you know of official data you know that, mm -hmm. that I mean, you, you, of course, you can't have a tree right up against your house. That is a fire no. hazard. <laughs> but, um, but that trees are not the the main problem. It's the undergrowth and the and okay, the debris the and the fuel load at the at the mm -hmm. ground level that's yeah. really causing a lot of issues. Yeah, such as okay. the broom and the gores and exactly and some of those things. So, Adrian, will you please do that for me? Uh, I'm noting in the minutes the desire for continued public education. Uh, Karen is actually the one that generally coordinates that subcommittee. Oh, my apologies. Thank I, you. I will. It's there. Oh, damn. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't have that data. Do you have some source of data? Any, oh, yeah. No, I was, only, I was only asking for a to-do item. I wasn't expecting you to put it together. Um, oh, okay. So I so, know Shauna's hand was up, but she took it down. Was that intentional? Yeah, it was about fi the fire. Day. When I look at those trees, I, um, I mean, I like the fact that there's nice mature trees, but what I see is a whole lot of badly pruned trees. Um, uh, that the crown, the crown weights are just crazy and off center. Uh, I see a lot of really badly pruned trees. <laughs> is what yeah. I, when I when I see that picture, I see a lot of really badly pruned trees. Um, yeah. And that's just <laughs> what I see. Um, cool. Um, Glenn? <laughs> I was just going to say, I think one thing the city could do is, is um, maybe move away a little bit from the practice of planting small street trees. Um, our street trees in Brisbane are really quite small, and they don't provide much in the way of shade. But street trees are far enough away from houses, usually, that they it seems like to me, like they could be a little bit bigger. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that's one thing that the city could actually do. Yeah, I like that. I think a larger tree is probably more robust against fire in, in most cases than a little like half shrub, half tree. Randy? Yeah, hi. So thank you, Barbara. I was just going to suggest to Karen that she communicate with me on this messaging because we've got a lot of good messaging that North County Fire Authority has already put about, about uh, lining up the trees. And also we've been working with them for the last month or so as they've been implementing that Coastal Conservancy grant that they received to uh, clear the public rights of way where there are trees that are hanging down into the right of way and where shrubbery is coming in so that there's the potential to create sort of this flaming tunnel if they were to engage. So that's what they've been doing on the backside on San Bruno, on Humboldt, mm -hmm. Kings and Trinity. I think, uh, I think the crew's been working the last two weeks now. Yeah. Thank you so much, Randy. I knew that information is out there and I really appreciate you tapping us into it. That's gonna make it much easier when we get back to that and are, we're able to put it all together. Thank you. Randy, are you able to take a look at the area that I'm talking about that 
that kind of corridor from um, above this uh, Littman school that runs all the way down to the pool where they recently pruned some eucalyptus. I, I consider that a high uh, hazard. And I don't know whose property it is. I believe it's the schools, but I don't know if the city shares in that. Uh, I'm concerned about that area. I'm sorry, I'm, I was talking while I was on mute. No, I, I'm happy to do that. I can have the fire marshal take a look at it. And that's 100% the school district. And I only know that because we were working with them when we finished the slide area above the pool and then that giant slide area that they have above the tennis courts. The city did the uh, construction management for them and some right. of the design, but it's 100% school property. Yeah, but we'll but take they, a look. They need, need some help with that. And uh, Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, can we get back? To, so the next subcommittee was uh, Festival Tree. Do we have anything? I'm not on that yeah. subcommittee anymore. Oh. I'm going to mute. Well, Who's we on met. Festival Tree? <laughs> we met and uh, at the uh, at the at the graveside of the of the demised tree yeah. and uh, yeah. and discussed um, its its demise and uh, talked about some ways to move forward. I have a uh, I have several really good friends that um, are professional arborists and um, a couple of, I've been meeting with them. I had some nice long conversations. We actually looked at the site. Um, perhaps, uh, actually the Abies Grandies is not, um, the other one that was recommended to me is perhaps a Norfolk Island um, pine. Um, I forgot to- uh, we, I, When you didn't yeah. send pictures, I'm sorry, Adrian No, so I think she did. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah, I, I, didn't, I spent all of like three minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I didn't didn't actually grab the right pictures. Google told the, me they were the right one. Yeah. The coastal the coastal Douglas fir. I mean, it's it's indigenous down the coast to, through Sonoma, um, and they use it to make Christmas trees. I mean, they use, they grow those on Christmas tree farms. They're sheared, um, and they're you know they they make pretty nice park trees. Uh, a couple of my friends were like that. That would be that's a nice choice um, because it is a little more native. Um, the Abies has a little um, is a little more uh, traditional. They use that in, as Christmas tree or a festival tree, um, a winter festival tree in a number of places, and it makes a nice park tree as well. Um, and it's very fast growing, uh, so it could could it, it, although it gets kind of large. Um, eventually. And um, this and the water table was taken in consideration because we have okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I told them about the wind and the water table and you know obviously our temperatures because they're they're all local. Um, they work with um, both friends of the urban forest in in San Francisco and also a lot of private pro projects between here and Sonoma and Napa. So. Um, those were some of the suggestions uh, that they gave. Right. Well, so, uh, so where we were was the, sub yeah. the subcommittee was interested in replanting something, but smaller and less obviously like a replacement for the existing tree, something that would grow to full height in quite a bit longer time and not stir up the same sort of... Um, higher <laughs> yeah black and white response as the last one did so for or against kind of thing that happened with the last one so and shauna offered to look for some local stock of a tree that was six ish feet tall or, or did we decide that we wanted a, a certain size of uh like a 24 inch box. Yeah, um, 24, 36 inch box. Uh, they should be probably about, you can probably get it, depending on the on the species, uh, between six and eight feet tall. And they would, they would, once you get them in and sort of settled, they should put on some nice height and, and girth fairly, relatively quickly. Providing, you know, we feed them and... <laughs> Don't and drown them. <laughs> yeah, don't drown them. Um, and then we'd, we'd still need to check in with the Park and Rec subcommittee that wanted, that was part of this whole project in the beginning. Yes. 
in the meantime, we were going to um, start working on fixing the, um, I guess, the sprinklers or, or whatever. That was already done, wasn't it, Karen? No, it was all turned off. It's oh, okay. yeah. off in that area. And then we would be prepared to plant that, what, in the late October, early November timeframe? Hopefully, yeah. Um, okay. I can, um, yes, yeah, so I'm sort of doing things as I have, I, I go to a lot of nurseries, <laughs> and, but I haven't, <laughs> haven't for the last couple of weeks, so got tied up with some other projects. All right. So it's kind of, it's kind of marching forward. Yes. Great. It sounds like we're pretty yeah. well taken care of on the festival tree. What's our yeah. next subcommittee, Adrian? I just want to say I'm really happy Sean is on that committee now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That is it for subcommittees. You're on to calendar item. Yeah, here we are in August. We did the BB report. No, no star. Next month we've got the coastal cleanup, which Ross did us that <laughs> really cute poster for. Um, Bob. 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 Sorry, Bob. 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 I can't. I can't draw. Miss <laughs> Um, your name's in front of me, but Bob's off the bottom of the screen. That's that's just blame it on Zoom. Hey, Bob. Um, uh, is somebody writing a ocean pollution and promo article for the Star? Is that what's happening? That is already submitted. Glenn uh, drafted an article, so thank you to Glenn for getting that in, and uh, should be a nice spread with the the ocean pollution article and the coastal cleanup day promo right. All right. Great. Oh, that reminds me, it's not on here, but the recycled art contest um, and deadline for submission is August 31st. So, um, did we want to extend I, that at all? Yeah, I thought we were going to extend it to mid September. We, um, we had discussed that possibility. I, I just reached out to Sarah uh, today from Parks and Rec. I haven't heard anything back from her, but. Um, She's the one who the submission emails were going to um, because I was out last year when, when we had the submission. So we set it up that way and never changed it. Um, I don't know if we've gotten any submissions yet. So I posed that question to her. And uh, last year, our judging committee was the two of us and Karen and Teresa Montgomery from Scavenger. So um, the question is out there for that group of as far as extending it. But if this committee has any strong feelings one way or another happy to have that input as well could you um reach out and figure out if we have any submissions and send that out in an email um because i think that i mean it's disappointing if we don't have any submissions <laughs> i don't know i've already i've already reached out to sarah this afternoon i haven't heard back okay. yet um I think I would probably need to coordinate that with a subcommittee, okay. unless you want to provide any specific direction at this point in time. Well, it's not on our agenda, so I don't really want to. I don't think we it. have a subcommittee, do we? Yeah, that was my second thing is there's no subcommittee for that. Well, so how about just if, if OSA wants before? to offer their thoughts and guidance, then staff will make a determination based on your input since we haven't agendized extending the contest. Yeah. So you would say if, if we have a small handful of submissions, you would like to extend the deadline. Yes. That would be my feeling. Um, yes. And who else, what, who else would like to speak on that? Yeah, I think we should extend it depending on how many um, submissions we have. Yeah, extend. Okay. Yeah. If we extend it, I might actually get it together to submit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Unless I can resubmit last year's, but I know I won't win again. <laughs> we are talking about this year, Michelle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jason, it's just been a hell of a year. And I threw away my secondary project after last year, and I should have kept it. Damn it. 
I mentioned the the event subcommittee because I thought actually they were involved last year when we were getting it off the ground, but also um, because we had talked about the possibility at one point of having a display of submissions at Day in the Park. Oh, yeah. So I think that's uh, if we decide not to do that, which we I think already had thought that the logistics of that might actually be rather challenging at this point. Yeah. Um, then we don't really have a particular need for one deadline or another. We set the deadline at the end of August because we wanted to give ourselves time if we were having day in the park and wanted to have a, a display of submissions that would hopefully give us a little bit of time. But I think our, our discussion at the subcommittee was that we probably would not do that in any case. So there's not really a, a need for a particular deadline in that case. All right, um, well, let's just tap the events subcommittee if, if staff feels they need to run things by somebody and just we'll go from there. We all loosey goosey on this one. Sounds good. I think that mostly does it for our calendar. Hey. Um, share and member matters. I don't particularly have anything. <laughs> We need theme music. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a story. Hey, Brady. Who's a resident musician? <laughs> is Bob as talented with um, uh, audio collages as he is with visual collages? <laughs> okay, sorry. Clap like it's too late everybody to be else is clapping. <laughs> um, I'm not talented there. Does anybody have any chair or member matters that they would like to discuss? No, except that I'm just really proud of our committee for working so hard uh, during the pandemic and trying to get all this stuff done. There's a lot on our plate, yeah. but we're plowing through it as best we can. That's there it. sure is. All right, well, if nobody has anything in particular, let's go ahead and uh, discuss our next meeting is September 22nd. Um, and if everybody's agreed, I'll make a motion for adjournment. Second. We need to roll call this one. I don't think we need a motion either. Okay. <laughs> I'll just have to wander off and get a beer. <laughs> I need dinner now. I'm, All right, too. I'm dying. Oh, um, are we are we um, meeting in person or is are we continuing with the uh, these uh, virtual meetings? I think last virtual? time we decided to continue virtually. At present, um, the uh, unless it has been extended and I have not heard yet, uh, September 30th is the end of the executive order allowing for virtual meetings. So next month we will continue to be virtually. We may need to have at least someone in person or the ability for the public to come in person starting in October. Um, but uh, we will keep you posted on that. We should have an update, I would assume, at our next meeting. Jason? Could, could that be changed? I mean, if Delta is still a concern, could they extend it or? I would not be surprised if that would happen, but uh, I, I, can't, I can't speculate on what the governor or legislature is going to do on that. Right. I suppose it depends on whether the recall happens or not. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't okay. think it depends on that. I think it really depends on what happens with the Delta variant. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Thanks, everybody. Oh, Randy's Randy? got his hand up. Wait, oh, oh, Randy, oh, yeah. stay put. Randy. Yeah, so, so Barbara, word out of our lobbyist office and the lobbyist that we use as one of our attorneys is in Sacramento is that the governor's office was just having conversations about this this morning. So all I could say is it's in a state of flux, stand by to stand by. Uh, I, I would guess that the best you're going to have is a hybrid meeting after September. So many of you who choose to will still be able to, to participate via Zoom. And as Adrian mentioned, we'll, we may have to have one person and one staff member present, uh, but it doesn't look like it's gonna go back to fully open meetings anytime soon. Oh man, Randy, thank you. You're, you're welcome anytime, Randy, you're getting it done for us here. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I apologize for my absence over the many, many other meetings, so.
You've missed so much fun, Randy. You have no idea. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Have a good week or night. I gotta go eat. Okay. Cheers, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye.